don't know how it was years or centuries ago. Because our church is 2,000 years old, 20 centuries. But I do know that for a time now, there has been a false debate which consists in opposing the spiritual life with the words of charity. If you have money, you must to give alms for the poor. But if you help the priests or you collaborate so that the church is well arranged or you give alms to buy a new chalice, for example, or a tabernacle, that, in many environments, is from when upon. Everything is up to help the poor. This is a debate, an opposition, I repeat, false. There is no reason to oppose, to confront both things. It is not a matter of choosing between worship and charity because what we have to do is to take care of both things and moreover then with ourselves you have to have time for God in your tabernacle you have to have time for God in yourself with prayer listening to Jesus' voice and your conscience when he's rightly conformed, you have had time for the Blessed Virgin praying the Rosary, and you have to have time, of course, to be with the people, to be a good professional, to fulfill your obligations, to help those who are lonely, those who need financial help or good advice, And if you don't have enough time, comply your obligations first, of course. And if you don't have enough money, well, maybe you have to the one asking for alms. But to the extent that you have the possibilities of times or money, you have to dedicate it to both things. You cannot say, I only pray or I only do works of charity. First, because prayer is already an extraordinary work of charity. Because you are, among other things, begging God for help for people who have asked you to pray for them. My friends, I will say co-founders, the Carmelites, nuns of the Incarnation in Avila, spend many hours of the day praying. They are very charitable people because their prayer is a great work of charity. I entrust myself to them and I have always experienced their intersection before God as a blessing for me. Therefore, there is a false debate to think that you have to choose between praying or working. Because what we must do is pray and work. A friend of mine, dear friend, helped me so much financially to carry out Magnifica. Another dear friend with his wife who helped me so much to support the seminary, at least to have a decent food are people who lead, who lead a deep spiritual life. These people, because they lead this spiritual life, because they dedicate time every day to pray to the Eucharist, these people do works of charity. Possibly, I don't know, but possibly, if it were not for the time they are dedicated to prayer, to Holy Mass, if they, if they weren't for that, the money they give to help, to help us, to help the poor, 
perhaps they could spend it on a luxury, a better trip, a more valuable watch, an even more expensive car, or simply save it and have it in the bank. And those are my personal experience with people I know, and I know well. This has always been the case. I repeat, it is false debate to confront spirituality with charity, to be with God, to pray, Holy Mass, the Rosary, Confession, Communion, the recitation of the Chapel of the Divine Mercy, the practices of piety, it is our duty to do so. It is our duty to, to God. Present, for example, in the tabernacle. It is not our only duty, it is obviously, but it is our duty. Moreover, it is a duty of gratitude. Today's example, when Mary, Marta, and Lazarus' sister pours the expensive perfume on Jesus' feet, she does it out of love for Jesus, but she does it out of gratitude because Jesus has resurrected her brother from the death. He resurrected him, left the house, and when she returned, I don't know if it was all her saving or if she had more money left over, I don't know, but certainly 300 denarii then was a lot, but it was gratitude. You are before the tabernacle out of gratitude. You go to Mass out of gratitude. You pray the Rosary out of gratitude. You dedicate your time to the Lord. Sometimes you feel like a more, sometimes less. Sometimes you are distracted. Sometimes you are in the seventh heaven. It doesn't matter. It is better if you are in the seventh heaven every day. But you are there out of gratitude. Afterwards, out of gratitude, you go to conform those who suffer, which is sometimes not easy, but you are there. You feel like a more, or you know, but you are there out of gratitude to God. You reach here, your wallet and financially help the church, the poor, out of gratitude, without roots. There are simply no trees. Flowers are very pretty, very pretty. I like them very much, but flowers are dead beans. They are cut, they are cut artificially. They can last because you can put water or a product that keeps them a little bit more alive, but they're dead. They have been cut off from their communication with the root. Without spirituality, without prayer, charity is not possible. Perhaps philanthropy and humanism might be possible. Well, each one one will give himself what he gives himself, some frankly very little, others more, but charity the virtue of charity is not possible without spirituality because, among other things, the virtue of charity, and it will be good for some to read at least once the Catechism, the virtue of charity is the virtue that has to be exercised, first of all, with God. This is what the Catechism says in the first place, with God, and with God directly, with God directly through prayer, through adoration before the tabernacle, and then it is exercised with our neighbor in whom Christ himself is present. Those, they wanted to kill Jesus because it seemed to them that he was taking clients away from them. Well, they wanted to kill Lazarus. They wanted to kill Lazarus for the same reason, but the traitor, Judas, turned Jesus over because perhaps the Lord didn't let him continue stealing. That, at least, is the implication of today's Gospel. Then, many of these who talk about charity, perhaps, not always, the money goes where it should go. Prayer, 
in alms. No prayer or alms. Prayers and alms. Roots and fruits. Amen.